Okay, so that's all the preliminary stuff out of the way. Let's talk about the kind of site that we're creating. I think one of my slides got out of the way here. The kind of site we're creating is a website that is suitable for service professionals that looks good on mobile devices. This is the first course actually that I've taught that includes responsive design as one of the key elements of it. And a responsive design is a design that responds to the device that is viewing it. And so what we're working here is we're trying to create a, a site that is suitable for service professionals but that also looks good on mobile devices. And you know, really service professionals can be taken very generally. I'm talking about architects, engineers, design professionals, con coaches, consultants, maybe contractors and subcontractors. I'm sorry, somebody's suggesting that they're having difficulty hearing me. And if you're having difficulty hearing me, would you please raise your hand? Because I need to adjust that. Okay. So, so anyway, this is really for any kind of a small business person that is that wants to display and describe their services to somebody. That's the kind of site that we're building. You know, we're not really building an e-commerce site or an internet marketing site. We're not building a blog. We're building, in this case, a website that is suitable for a service professional. And the business purpose of this site is to help prospective customers find you when they're searching for your services online. So we do that by presenting your services and then we want to establish your credibility and we want to reflect your uniqueness by having some kind of a unique site style. Now unique is kind of funny in the conversation of the web because of course you know it's pretty hard to be unique on the web these days because you only have a square or rectangular palette. You only have so many colors. It's only so much shape. It's only two dimensions and and so eventually, you know, it's difficult to be unique. But nevertheless, we want to create a site that isn't obviously a copy of somebody else's site. Okay. So this website is really going to have two phases. The first phase is just a static website and by static I mean it's not going to have any blog component to it at all. We're just going to create a bunch of static pages. Everything associated with using the site as a blog we will leave to the end which is essentially phase two. In phase two we'll discuss how to turn WordPress from a static site into a simple content management system. And we're going to do that by adding blog functionality but there's no reason to think about that as blogging you know what you can think about it as is adding content to your site in a format that makes it easy for people to access so anyway we'll have two phases we'll have the simple introductory phase where it's a static site and then we'll have phase two which is when we add in the the blog functionality and create the simple content management system and we're going to use a specific set of tools in order to create this site we're going to use wordpress and the genesis theme we're also going to be using the agency child theme. We will be using at least a couple of plugins that I've written for Genesis, which I'm at the moment referring to as the BYOB Genesis plugins. If you're familiar with me at all, you know that I have a handful of plugins for the thesis theme. They're called the BYOB thesis plugins. Well, there, I'm not actually creating analogies of those for Genesis at the moment but nevertheless there are a couple of plugins that I've written for this class that we'll be using. We'll also be using the Next Gen Gallery plugin which is a very powerful image gallery which I think many people need to, to learn how to use. We'll be using the Genesis Slider plugin for showing the sliding content. We'll be using the Contact Form 7 plugin for our contact form and we'll use various Google products. Now, why am I using those tools? We're using those tools specifically because I've tested them all together and they all work together and because they can all be used without learning CSS or PHP. So much of, of conversation around using Genesis involves doing some kind of code modifications and what we're going to do is, is focus on doing this without using uh, any kind of code. And, and so I know that all of those tools together can be combined to create 
this site because in fact I built this site with those tools.